that talk about trans people, intersex people that used to be referred to as hermaphrodites, which is a phrase that, that we don't prefer anymore. We find it to be very triggering and offensive because of the Why? way that it's been used historically. Okay, but kind it was of like the medically N-word, used, right? Kind right? of like the N-word, right? Like, there's a certain Well, not kind of like context. the N-word. Wasn't hermaphrodite a medical term? Welcome to another installment of There Are Only Two Genders Change My Mind. Unedited conversations with uh, people on the street. Usually we do this on campus, but during summer break, that's kind of hard to do. So before we start, because this is a long one, I wanted to show you how this conversation ends up with our uh, second person who, who claimed to be intersex and uh, got a little hostile. And the reason for this is because of the length of these conversations, if you ever feel like we're talking around in circles or getting off in the details, you'll see that they come back later on and they matter. That's key when having a conversation and finding common ground. So this is about the end point. Well, no, 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 no. The, the, the biological makeup of, of a brain of is not societal. The biological makeup of no, a brain is right, biological. No, you're right, but what I'm saying is so the brain, make, right. So what I'm saying, the brain that you call the male brain or the female brain with what you're you saying. You did, not me. I'm saying is closer to that brain that, that you were referring to as a male brain. You referred to it that way. So I want to make sure I'm correct that you believe there is a male brain generally and I'm a female going to brain say generally. Yes to you when I'm explaining my answer, when I'm giving you my answer. Okay. My answer is what you are referring to as a male brain is more. But I didn't. You did. That's why it's important. You brought this up male brain and female brain. I'm trying to understand what you brought up. I didn't bring up male brain, female that brain. brain. So that context matters because we are going to rewind all the way to the beginning where you can see that intersex girl works for this person who approached me, uh, transgender male to female Danielle Skidmore actually running for Austin City Council in District 9. How are you? Would you, oh, would you like to, to change my mind? I'll try. Okay, thank you very much, I appreciate it. I was going to the post office and saw your table and I heard about your show, so I thought... Oh, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, right? Appreciate it. Cool. What's your name? Danielle. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, Stephen, uh -huh. um, and uh, if you're familiar at all with the show, this is just where we engage in a civil discussion, dialogue, and issues that are usually pretty controversial. They result in talking points with a lot of people, and you know, I guess the full-length conversation. So, uh, I believe there are two genders. Okay. You're welcome to change my mind. I think that uh, I think human biology is really complicated. Mm -hmm. I think that. Uh, Gender identity is real and intrinsic, and I think that I don't think there's a binary. Sorry, me, I don't think there's a binary for anything. Can I ask, are you transgender? I am actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, I'm sweaty this morning. <laughs> that's okay. No, and it's I was, funny. I literally, I was walking down the street and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a sign, right, to have right. this conversation. So. Um, what, what do you believe is, is, is wrong, I guess, about my state? You that said there's it, two genders? Yeah. I think uh, I've come to realize, so I'm trans, right? And, yeah. And uh, that uh, why, why we are the way we are, like what makes our core humanity, right, mm -hmm. is beautifully complicated. So like my son, right? my son's got a genetic disorder, right? He's missing an enzyme that lets him metabolize two amino acids, right? Mm -hmm. Why that is, you have no idea. Like, it was a, a biological variation, it's sure. true, right? It doesn't diminish his humanity, right. but it is fundamentally different. Now, like, why I'm trans, to be honest with you, I don't know, right? Now, it took me 37 years to stop fighting what I knew to be true from the earliest age of my child mm -hmm. to work my way through the social stigma of my reality, which was that I know I'm different. I don't understand why I am. I don't know why I would, you know, go and hide in the bathroom and wear my sister's clothes, right? Like right. when I was seven, right? Like, yet it all got wrapped into the expectations of society. Okay, so I want to make sure I'm just kind of unwrapping this uh, yeah. carefully. Um, you said the truth yeah. of your reality, yeah. that you are a woman. A transgender woman, yeah. Okay. Um, how do you know that's the truth? How do I know that it's true? Yeah. Um, how do you know that you're a heterosexual, I presume, heterosexual cisgender man? Okay. That's presumptuous of me, right? No, it, well, that's okay. That was, that was presumptuous, yeah, but right. correct. Okay. Uh, well, I think this is obviously a big uh, component of the LGBTQAI yeah. community that uh, 
preferences, sexuality preferences. As far as I'm attracted to women, that's that's a that's a preference, obviously. So uh, it's innate. I was born. I like women, and uh, biologically, I was born a male because uh, I have a penis and the hormonal profile and chromosomes of a male. So that's how I know that it's so true. Like, to, true to state that I'm a male. That you're the male because you're you're a male because like you're X Y. I didn't simplify it to X Y to a multitude of factors. I have a male brain. I have a male body. Everything from bone density to my hormonal profile to right. yes, my penis. Uh, all of these things pretty clearly uh, would file me in the cabinet under male biologically. Like in the spec, in like the spectrum of biological variation, you're in that big collection of people that uh, have all of those things in alignment. Yeah, the, and, the, then, the, and yeah, there exactly, are people, of right? Like. Two-thirds of one percent is the best number now, right? That um, are transgender, based on you know what we know. Sure. Uh, that which in Texas is like 130,000 adults, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, for reasons that are still unknown, are don't have all of those biological components that you described. Don't align as cleanly as yours do. Okay. Um. Well, you say, you know, unknown. Um, again, this goes back to you said your truth that you are a female. Yeah. You, know, you asked me why am I a male. I, I, I hope that I've answered it as, as clearly as I can. Right. So I would re return that same question to you because I think we need to start with the presupposition. There needs to be the same amount of validity to our arguments as far as us rationalizing them. Rationalizing. You said the truth that you are a right. female. Yeah. You were born a male. How do you know that's the truth? I was born a transgender woman. Okay, and how do you know that's the truth? How do I know that's the truth? Yeah. Uh, like, in what biological context is it? Like, is it validated? Is that the question? Yeah. How, how, how do you know that you're not uh, simply a, a man who believes he's a woman? How do you? Like, why do? You, so, why are you? Uh, if you're heterosexual, why are you attracted to women? Well, there's a lot of biological mechanisms in there, namely to procreate since, uh, since the beginning so of civilization. So, somebody is attracted, same-sex attracted. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Gay man, do you believe that that's not their intrinsic reality? Well, again, it's a sexual preference, and I think that's very important because the sexual preference is different from uh, biology, right? And this is what I find also pretty interesting to me is yeah. right now they're teaching that, you know, obviously you're born gay, uh, but gender is a choice, and that to me I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't agree with. So. Which and how do you know, you, you, you say that yeah. you're a transgender, you were born a transgender woman, right? Yeah. But I would assume on your birth certificate it said male. Right. So at some point you made the decision to live the way that you live right now, correct? At some, yeah, at some point I made the decision, uh, it was almost a decade ago, to, uh, to unpack all of the guilt and shame I felt for being different, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, at some point I made the decision to to unpeel guilt and shame, right, mm -hmm. about my truth, and to start trying to reconcile it with the rest of my life, and to reconcile it with a society that is still uh, pretty hostile to people who are different. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a question of no longer fighting, fighting against myself. Yeah. So and then even after I did that, I spent another six years desperately trying to not not accept that. I accepted the truth and I'm like, how do I reconcile with that? I'm an engineer, a civil engineer. I'm a parent who special needs child, right? Like, how can I how can I be who I knew I am and still function in society? Mm -hmm. So it took me years and eventually I realized that I don't have a choice. Like, you know, we look at the news this morning, right? And uh, with Tony Bourdain, you know, taking his life, right? Right. So 40% of transgender people attempt suicide. Can I pause you right there really yeah. quickly? Just first off, I hope that I haven't been hostile. I know yeah, you talked about that. I haven't been hostile okay. at all. No, Even, this is a great this Okay, good. Because um, I know we disagree, but I, I certainly don't want to be disrespectful to you personally, even if I disagree with you. So I I, yeah, I don't know that I don't find that we disagree. Actually. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that way because the last thing I want is for you to feel as though you've been sat down and it's uh, it's been a, a you know a, a sandbagging. Um, no. And and you've brought up you know Anthony Bourdain. You brought up the suicide rate. Right? I think that's very uh, important. You know, it's about 41 percent. It doesn't get better after 
uh, hormone replacement therapy or even actually oh. doing the, the okay. full sex reassignment surgery. So here we are, right? I will disagree with you. Okay. I, uh, I think the data shows that when people are able to live their lives as themselves and are accepted in their community, in their social networks, that's their friends and their family, professionally, in their city, mm -hmm. when they're not stigmatized, when they don't lose their job, when they don't lose their housing, when they aren't ostracized or demonized, mm -hmm. right? Like our state legislature spent the last, the last spring and then called a special session, yeah. essentially to demonize my existence based on somebody's you know, I, I don't honestly, sincerely held religious belief. I'm not sure why, but to basically challenge my very validity as a human being, right? Then, yeah, people can be frustrated and scared and terrified and hopeless and then kill themselves. But in my community, when people are able to live their lives and are accepted and able to, you know, aren't discriminated, right? Mm -hmm. Then the, their suicide rates fall dramatically. The single best thing you can do for somebody who's LBGTQ of any sort, but especially trans is recognize their truth and accept their humanity well I, I would disagree with you there um, <laughs> and first off I think you made okay. a couple yeah and I, let me explain why you, you made a couple of presumptions maybe they're not uh, uh, trying to uh, demonize your very existence maybe they just disagree with you and maybe it doesn't come from a Christian perspective maybe it comes from a scientific one maybe it comes from a perspective of a medical perspective for example at, uh, at Johns Hopkins no, no, that's okay. I, I think we're okay having a conversation you and I right now right that's, yeah we're good we're good thank you though um, and the suicide rate statistically, anecdotally, I'm glad to hear that, that, that your, your group of friends do better. Because one thing, I definitely don't want people attempting no, suicide in a 41%. It's not, it's not just my friends. I mean, the data from the National Center for Trans Equality, the Equality Texas, HRC, it's not, it's not like my anecdotal sort of group of friends. The scientific data shows that when people are not discriminated against and when yeah. transgender individuals are able to live their life, whether they you know, just transition socially or have hormone replacement therapy or have surgery, whatever, when people are able to live their lives, their mental health is better. Well, st statistically, it's, it's, it's inaccurate. Statistically, the suicide rate doesn't really improve after I, the you know, I'm sex gonna reassignment therapy. I'm going to keep pushing back on that, so maybe that's something we can follow let's up on. Okay, let's assume it's comparable. Let's assume it's slightly lower. Let's, let's go with that. I've seen the studies that you're talking about, and it might be slightly lower. It's not dramatically lower. But I think this is predicated on the idea, and I don't think it's an ill-founded idea, that because of discrimination, because of societal pressure, because of feeling like an outsider, uh, people have more mental health issues. People are more prone to depression. People are more likely to attempt suicide if they feel ostracized and isolated, right? Yeah, if they're treated as less than human. I would, I would agree. Um, but the fact is minorities generally commit suicide or attempt it in far fewer numbers. For example, white males are two times more likely than black men. The transgender attempted suicide rate is higher than American slaves or Jews in concentration camps. Are, are we to believe that... Um, they have they've been treated more poorly in modern America than American slaves or Jews and you're asking me to, Auschwitz? you're asking me to compare trans uh, transgender individuals to uh, no, the, sati the, sti the statistical know. reality I, I, that nowhere yeah, else do you find that suicide rate outside of some serious psychiatric disorders including those who have been enslaved I, which might suggest again that this is a this is a, a not a truth as you said um, people may perceive it as a reality, but it, it may not be. Um, it may not be ideal to treat it just telling people that that's the truth, that's the reality, when it's in conflict with biology and their hormones and their brain and their biological makeup, because it can have catastrophic results. And how many genders are there? Because now we're talking about non-binary, right? How I know many you're... genders are there. I don't. I think gender is a continuum. I think part of our, so like this is my take on it, right? And this is my own personal opinion and how I've come How, how do you identify, just so I make how sure? Do, I do you just identify as a woman? I'm a transgender woman. Yeah, so you I'm say female. transgender woman? I, I, but like, you know, I'm comfortable owning the fact that I'm okay. trans. I don't know that any of us has a responsibility to own anything about our own individuality. Like, I don't think you, anybody needs to walk down the street and say, hi, I am a heterosexual man or I am a homosexual woman, right? Like, I, but for me, I'm comfortable being visible, right? Sure. I'm lucky that I get to live in Austin and I get to be visible and not suffer too many consequences. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality is I am a very small sliver of the trans population. Right. I weren't white and professional, right? My murder rate, if I were an African-American transgender woman, 
I'd be 30 times more likely to be murdered than yeah. I am. So African American so, men are much more likely to be murdered than white men too. So, so a big part of that is right. not I mean, necessarily trans. Race is real, right? And that's that's well, by other black issue. people too. Race is a component of every all of our interactions in society. I, I, just, gender, I think okay, it's so important. Back to my truth, right? Yeah. So like our gender identity, mm -hmm. who we are in our brain from birth. Before, before we're talking about any kind of hormonal replacement, okay, yeah. is uh, varies across all of us. I, I, I'm, that I like, I'm at peace with. I honestly think the science will prove that fact. There, there was a study that was presented this summer in uh, I forget the researchers. I think were Belgian or Dutch, and it was presented in Spain, Barcelona, like a month ago that doing imagery studying, right? So sure. functional MRIs on brains of transgender children before HRT, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is, there have been some studies that have done in the The most past famous study was the Rometty study. Was the, uh, was done with folks who might have been in transition or post-transition. Yeah. And this study has been uh, um, children who identify, you know, it, yeah, at a young age, pre-puberty, many, mm -hmm. before any kind of medical intervention. and. The studies are showing changes in bra differences in brain structure that are independent of, of whether somebody is sort of estrogen dominated or testosterone dominated. Could, could you um, uh, describe brain changes? What do you mean by that? I describe. You mean what the studies were showing? Yeah. I don't know because I haven't actually read the medical, like the okay. medical, the paper itself. I read the abstract for okay. the information. As Can, I just want to make sure I'm understanding because we just jumped around a bit. I just want to make sure I'm understanding what yeah. you're saying. So the, there, you're saying there's a more recent study yes. that showed children pre-transition, pre -transition. Uh, let's say a boy who identified as a girl actually had brain differentiations from the standard male brain yeah, so deviations. A, so a transgender girl, right? Her brain has structures that they're observing with imagery now that are more consistent with cisgender girl, okay, than they are with a cisgender boy. Okay. Regardless so, of chromosomes, regardless right. of external genitalia. Um, I haven't read this recent study. I'm very familiar with the Rometty study yeah. and then the, uh, the more comprehensive study afterward, which, which said that the changes only occur after hormones are administered. Oh, no. But um, it is interesting that you bring that up. So that would, that would presuppose then that there is a male brain and a female brain. Yeah. Right? I, I think there is a male brain and a female brain. Okay. So then that would sort of, uh, and that I would have to dispel the brain. idea that gender is a social expression. Because you said it's a spectrum, but oh, if there is a male oh, and a female yeah, brain. Yeah, so that's a good point, right? Then how that, can someone be born that, with a male brain so as a female? As humans, I think, I think our gender identity, okay, is real and intrinsic and based in biology. Like, okay. that's something that took me four decades to really to work through sure because of everything else socially around us the pressures for conformality you know conforming and because quite honestly being trans isn't easy oh i you can't imagine yeah saying, right so uh but and all of my friends everybody that i like when i finally came out and started coming out and i have building this huge trans community you know my circle of trans friends almost universally uh -huh. Like when we talk to each other, we all have the same lived experiences that we knew this from a very early age. And what we struggle with is how do we reconcile that with the rest of society? So yes, I think gender is real and intrinsic. Is, is so you do believe there's a male brain and a female brain? I think that there is, all of our brains vary beautifully so, and I think that there are brains that are well, primarily male okay. or female. I think there are brains, when we talk about somebody who might be gender non-binary, who are somewhere in between. Hmm. Uh, just they are. I don't think that there's a binary for anything. But your point so, about the so how many genders are there? How many genders are there? Because I, you talked about demonizing people, De yeah. and I don't want to demonize anybody. Oh. I don't want. Noisy. Sorry, yeah, yeah, it gets a little noisy. The last guy was going out with a Harley. Uh, there's <laughs> yeah, it's rap rally this week. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so. What was I talking about, sorry, before that truck went oh, by? Oh, about the oh, yeah, I don't want to, genders. I don't want to demonize anybody. Yeah, and of right. course, when you're looking at uh, uh, state laws that misgendering could be considered some form of assault or misgendering could be hate speech, it's important if you're presenting this argument as your truth. Is somebody proposing legislation that Yeah, it exists in Canada already. 
misgendering is already is already a crime, and it's been proposed here in the United States. And so it's very important that okay, if we do has, that. Okay, I, let me just clarify. Okay, I because I spent a lot of time at the Capitol, right, last yeah. year, and I don't know. I hope I don't have to spend a lot of time next year at the Capitol, but I sense not, it may. All of us feel the same way. I know, right? Yeah. Let's argue about other things. It's not exactly right? a party. But I don't see. Uh, I, I haven't seen anybody proposing that uh, somebody uh, using the wrong pronouns, for example. Oh, yeah, so it happens all over the place. For example, in New York, if you're a landlord and you do it, you can be sued. Um, and in Canada, uh, uh, Jordan Peterson okay. is someone I would, I would really look so up where I was raised. this is an example where like, I'm not going to argue or disagree with you because I don't, like, without the... So the, you wouldn't want any kind of laws like that, the misgender? You wouldn't want any pronoun laws or anything like that, the then? Pronoun laws? No. I mean, I, I think Good. that okay, our agree. community, right, I think that we should have protection, non-discrimination protection that's afforded to, you know... Well, then it has so to be defined like any other protected group. So it's important. I mean, you've talked about your truth and you yeah. living within society. Yeah. I think the issue with people who disagree with it, first off, the biological basis, yeah. uh, it, obviously the suicide rate, there are a lot of concerns, but also right now we're restructuring all of society, Western society, to accommodate less than 1% of the population. How are we restructuring? And if we're going to, if, if, sorry, if I may just finish. Yeah, please. If we're going to do that, I think it's important for me to know yeah. if I need to use the right pronouns and not be accused of demonizing someone, even accidentally, how many gen how many pronouns are there? How many genders are there? Okay, well, let me let me push back, okay? I think if you, if you, make, if you use the wrong pronoun, right? Mm -hmm. If somebody, if I said, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, that if I use she, her for you, right? Sure. I made a mistake, right? That's a, a mistake, right? And if somebody... I think it would be a deliberate me, insult. You're not making... This wouldn't be a mistake. You looked at me and assumed, as you said, male, heterosexual. And that's fine. I have no well, problem at this with point, it. if I chose to use she, but yeah. if... Her, like, if I'm talking and I say, you know, she instead of he or... or make, like, like, just that, right? Get it wrong. And then somebody says, hey, you know... It's she, right? It's a term, it would be respectful, right? What if someone says Z? What if someone has a different gender that's not in the binary and wants a new pronoun? And, and what if I won't be compelled to use their so language? language, right? So languages. How many genders are there? How many genders How many are pronouns there? are there? Uh, what do we do with people who okay, don't use a proper pronoun? I think we treat everybody with respect, right? So if you came sure. to me and said, I would prefer that you use they, them, right? Because I'm non-binary. Or Z, zero, okay? Which is like... Uh, a new term, yeah. Which is actually an old term. Z, zero is older than they, them, right? And linguists will, like, debate, you know, which is more linguistically correct. And, and I think that, you know, language is, a, is an attempt to describe our society. So if you asked me to use they them, yeah. I would I would work to use they them because I want to respect you, right? But now what if, if I inadvertently said he, right? Mm -hmm. Instead, uh, I wouldn't consider that hate speech, right? Well, for example, I asked you if you were transgender when you sat down. Yeah. I've asked people that who were transgender and they were immediately very offended. Yeah. Um, but again, I have to know so that I don't miss misgender you so that I don't get into trouble. This, this is a society where it divides us no, more than it unites us. Do. And I, I tried to ask you in a respectful way with that. But I don't think it divides us well, at all. Well, you should have seen this, uh, this lady in uh, Ann Arbor. She wasn't happy about she it. She wasn't happy that, that you asked? asked. Yeah, transgender. Well, I, I think it's a very personal question, right? And I don't go, think it's very... If we go back know, to how many genders are there, how many pronouns okay, so are there, if we're go going back, to restructure society, so I think back, we need to know. Yeah, but let's go back to why, why does my gender identity, like in normal moving about society, right? Yeah. Why does whether I'm trans or not matter to you? Yeah, well, because it's a central building block for society, the American family. We see statistically that children do better with a mother and a father in the household. It's the biggest determining uh -huh. factor. All right. It's the biggest determining factor so, in poverty, crime, whether they go on to college, whether they so end up in prison, whether they have a family you, of their own, you, happiness, yeah. mental illness, mom and dad, and his dad specifically still in the household. I mean, we talk about these social pro programs, welfare, we talk about improving education. If we could have more families with a mother and a father with right. the children, there would be nothing that could affect uh, the productivity so and the, the outcome for, for children. You. Yeah. Am I a lesser parent to my son because I'm trans? I believe that you're, I believe that all children, blanket statement, do better with a mother and a father in the household. What about that? family arrangement mm -hmm. is intrinsically better than a mother and another mother or two fathers or it's a, a fair mother question. and a transgender mother. It's a fair question. I so believe what, that a, what about it is what about it is better yeah. other than it's it's not the majority. Right. But how is that intrinsically better? Right. Um, 
Well, the reason the statistics would reflect that as far as productivity and outcomes with children is because, and in my opinion, so that, these are the statistics. My opinion, and again, you have a lot of sociologists and scientists who look at this, uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. I, I, don't, I be, don't believe that two mothers can provide everything that a mother and a father can provide a child, and I don't believe that two fathers can provide everything that a mother and a father can provide so a child. I don't believe men and women are interchangeable. And I think that's the core issue right ah, now. Okay. And when we say gender's non-binary, that's a spectrum, and we haven't gotten definitive answers on any of this, we're saying that we gender is inter- definitive answers. That's the I think we do. The, I think we do. Yeah, I, I don't know that we do. I don't like in my life when I'm moving about the world, right? Yeah. When I'm practicing as an engineer, taking care of my son, like, what do my chromosomes look like? Is not. It has nothing to do with how I'm able to interact with society and how I'm able to take care of him. And I think it has I, a lot to do with no, it. No, I like. Well, I'll tell you my lived experience is that I am just as capable of taking care of my son now as I was before and in many ways better because I'm no longer fighting with the crushing burden of knowing something to be true Mm -hmm. right and not being able to live it so then when you talk about people in a family that is a you know a a mother and a father being somehow healthier for children uh, I I come back to so much of uh, the health in our families and in our lives has to do with everything else in our social stigma that we're li- living with. So, yeah, you know something? My reality now as uh, living in the world... You keep saying my, a, reality, my reality, my truth. My truth. What's the reality, the truth? I think is what matters to find ah, common ground. What's the truth? My truth is the truth for me. It's that simple. That's just another way of saying my truth. What's we, the we, truth it does, biologically? What's the truth scientifically? The, the truth biologically is... And all creatures are phenomenally complicated sure. and the truth biologically is different for every one of us. Peter's truth biologically sure. is is different, but it doesn't make him any less human. No, just it doesn't like make him any less human. So there is no truth. There's just no like just like an 8-week-old fetus is no less human than a baby and that's why I'm pro life. This is human DNA. This is a genetic code that so determines then, your... So then the idea... So, that, so no, the, I don't think that anyone is the, less human. Just like I don't think so. Listen, I have family members who are bipolar. Right, but it right? I've, 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 had, I've had suicides so in the family with people What you saying is that my truth is I'm not... I'm not really able to say a whole lot. You, I haven't really gotten many words in. I haven't really been able to express my opinion, but I'd love... Continue. Well, I want to look... Uh, and then I think my it, truth and the truth is the question I'm trying to figure out. Yes. Is that what I hear from you when you keep saying what is the truth is that there is one singular answer for what it means to be human or what it means to be male or what it means to be female. We're specifically right? discussing gender. One, that for gender. And what I'm saying is there's not. Mm-hmm. There isn't. There, there's never been. Through history, there's never been. When you look at literature all the way back into the Bible, it reflects, you know, the historical record reflects that there are biology our humanity has always been beautifully complicated. So it's not, this is not... I don't don't disagree with that statement, but I do disagree with the idea that gender is a spectrum and that there's a limitless amount. I just disagree with that. Yeah, I know there's lots of people. I I know, I I know you do, right? What was was your name again? Danielle. Danielle, thank you, Danielle. I appreciate you taking the time. I too, it's good. I hope, I hope uh, this has been productive for you as well as, as, as myself. I really do appreciate you sitting down and we're having a civil dialogue, even if we disagree. Listen, honesty above civility, yeah. but I think you should have both. I put a, can I make a, a request? Yes. Actually, is that imagine a world where people were debating whether you were as legitimate in your humanity mm-hmm. as you. I'm not debating that you're legitimate in your humanity. I know, Just as I'm, I'm saying, not debating saying, that, someone, that my, my saying, uh, relative who's bipolar yeah. is legitimate in humanity. But I'm saying, imagine a world where you are. Yeah, but I'm not. I, I'm not suggesting you. I'm talking about our society right now. I think I'm you're misconstruing. About... I think if someone says there's two genders, you yeah. think that's demonization. No, I, I think that's say an demonizing. Opinion. I'm asking you to, have to go into your headspace. Sure. And say, imagine navigating a world yeah. where people will come up and actually challenge your legitimacy. Yeah, which and, I which I've done. Know, my truth, right, the truth, which I've right? done. I'll and, grant you that I've done. Yeah, and like imagine but, living in that space where strangers sure. can debate whether or not you are as legitimate. Yeah, that's all.
all I ask. It's not about legitimate. It's about the truth. They're debating as to whether so or not it's the truth. So legitimacy and the truth. So what's the difference between those? Yeah, well there's, well, there's a big difference when it's your truth or my truth, and we're talking about legitimacy. Legitimacy would be much more congruent with the truth. And so I'm if someone says gender is not a spectrum, yeah. if someone says there are two genders, uh, and that uh, the biological research would back this up and that I don't think it's productive to continue down this trail, certainly of a limitless gender spectrum. Um, that's not questioning, questioning your legitimacy as a human. That is questioning the nature of the condition, the nature of how you identify and why that is the case and the ramifications uh, societally. So then you're implying that there's something wrong with me. I, I'm implying that I believe uh, you're incorrect. I believe you were born a male, and I still would, would believe that you're a male. Yeah, so, I won't misgender you. So I don't be rude. So imagine a world where people could tell you that you're incorrect. I, well, that happens all the time. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not a good feeling, but this is an issue. No, I appreciate it, Danielle. Thank you very much. I think a friend here would like to get in. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time. Now enter, as previously mentioned, Danielle's intersex employee. You'll note a little different tone. This is a, I have a long line of ginger genetics. What's your name? Alicia. Alicia. Thank you, Alicia. So I, I noticed you were there for a long while with your, yeah, your video camera. Yeah, that's my boss, actually. I heard that y'all were doing this. Who, who's your boss? Danielle, who you were just Oh, Danielle, in. nice. Yeah. Uh, Alicia? Yeah, my name is Alicia. Alicia, nice to meet you, Alicia. Yeah. Appreciate it. And it's funny, I, I heard that y'all were doing this, and I texted her, and I was like, I'm on my way. She's like, oh, girl, I'm already there. I was like, okay. Okay. So, so yeah. It's kind of a double team action. I, not in like on purpose, but just kind of accidentally. And That's that was fine. a weird phrasing of that too, but anyway. How so? Well, so I actually wanted to talk about the biological aspect that you were yeah. referring to. Well, let, let me present my premise first, sure. because it's important that uh, people, anyone who's here who's, who wasn't here for the previous conversation, um, this is designed to be a discussion that hopefully opens a civil dialogue, I believe, in searching for the truth. I, uh, uh, my presupposition is that there are two genders, and if you would like to change my mind on that, you're, you're more than welcome. Sure, well, so, I heard my boss talking a lot about a spectrum, not just in terms of like gender identity, but also in terms of really any biological trait, right? That humans, like humans exist on a spectrum, whether it's a racial spectrum, like they're people that are half something or whatever, like the, biologically we're all on a spectrum. Some men can grow facial hair and some can't, like some of it's defined by your chromosomes, some of it's defined by hormone levels, some of it's defined, like, we all, I think you would not refute that we all exist biologically on a spectrum in terms of our phenotypes, right? And how, how we... There are certain, certainly differentiations between people. For example, you can have a multitude of men, some are tall, some are short, some are fat, some exactly, are thin, some have yeah. red hair, br right. brown hair, yeah. So we, but they're all men, yeah. It's nice to, when we can agree on something. Yeah. Um, well, so in terms of that spectrum and where I hope that like my existence can shed some light for you, I was actually born intersex, okay. which means that like you would never know this and no one who's ever, you know, been with me sexually would ever know this either, but I was actually born with XY chromosomes. And so instead of having a uterus and ovaries, I had internal testes that were then removed from me by sure. doctors who come Sorry. from kind of your perspective and some similar perspectives that we need to normalize people to fit these like society driven standards of what a human is or should look like. But so for me, my question for you is if I irrefutably was born intersex, like I can. That's okay, I, you don't, I'll, I'll just I go with it. I don't need to get my like birth certificate. Birth certificate, certificate no. Yeah, thank you. That was another thing, this whole birther thing, right? That's like proving. Birther? Basic truth. Yeah, the whole birther movement, right? Like needing to show our birth certificates to like prove our legitimacy as, as humans. I'm thinking back to Trump and Obama and everything. Anyway, oh, that's oh, not where I was. Yeah, un unrelated. unrelated. That, was, that was silly. Um, so if, if if it is irrefutably true that I was born intersex and that actually almost 2% of the world's population, so 150 million individuals worldwide were born intersex and yeah. then normalized through surgeries or, or otherwise, if we are born somewhere in between in terms of our like biological traits, mm -hmm. then how can it not also be true that we might identify somewhere in between in terms of our gender and how that presents itself? Okay. Like certain people are born, for example, with breasts and a penis, or they might have ambiguous genitalia, or like me, you know, like I was born with like, I hate that I have to sit here at a table with you talking about my genitalia. I don't believe any human should ever have to do that. You, you don't have to. Well, you the reason that I, down. right. And the, the reason I am is because there are people like you and you know, that are, I was about to say with respect, but that don't respect basic biology, people's identities, and like that was kind of my biggest argument against the bathroom bill when I was arguing with Lois Colcors, is like, if you wanna pass a discriminatory piece of legislation, at least open a bio textbook first. Like it's not hard. Like right. 
These are just like basic science. Okay, so a couple of things there. Um, first off, I, I hope you don't feel as like forced you to sit down here in any way. No, no, you, you, you didn't were... force me, but right. the conversation and the existence of it, that's what forces me because there are people who like are so fed up with having to legitimize their existence on a daily basis. Sure. When you don't have to do that, right? Like. You, you were born in a way where like no one is challenging that, and that's something that I heard my boss talking about too. That's actually, it's actually not true, I would, but you know, we don't need to get into my personal history. Okay. Um, so, so you mentioned a couple of things there. I want to sort of- Is there any water for- that There, there isn't, we, we used to until we realized that it was a legal liability. If, if someone, if maybe uh, Danielle can get you a bottle of water because you know, you know, the last thing you want is someone saying that I poisoned you. When no, I would never okay. do that. Yeah. I'm sure you can understand. Um, so you mentioned basic biology, basic biology textbook, and then you immediately followed up with how someone identifies. Yeah. I think they're two separate issues. Now, I understand that you're intersex. We've talked about this so, with so then, several. Right. So then what Can do you I, think in, re in relation to that? Yeah. So we've talked spectrum. about intersex. So another thing um, I would strongly disagree with, uh, statistically, you said 2% of the population are intersex. I said almost two. I believe it's 1.7. Yeah, I believe it's significantly large, lower than that, uh, particularly not. in there's the Western civilization, a, much large, lower. There's actually um, a dearth of data, though, as well, because what happens is doctors will play God and make a decision about what biological sex a child should have, and so they perform a surgery. And sometimes the yeah. parents aren't even made aware, or like with foster children, right? Like the state makes these decisions. So like, so you would again, believe it's higher like, than two percent? I don't have a printout of like a bio textbook with me, but I don't want to argue you, with you. You, you reference a biological over, textbook. Like, irrefutable truths, right? We can talk about your opinion, right? But like, sure. I don't want to argue with you about science. Sure. Really. Well, you haven't stated any irrefutable truths, so let's get to what the truth is. Okay. Um, so you believe it's higher than two percent? I Intersex. said 1.7, and that's But you said because record. doctors play God, the number's likely higher. Oh, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, okay. and, and so, and because this is also like when data started being collected, right? Like, sure. is after a lot of these decisions have been made. There are people that aren't told by their parents or by doctors and don't even know until maybe they don't get their period or, you know, something like that sure. that, like, helps them realize yeah. that they've been born different. Right. Um, so I want to make, do you believe it's higher than 2% or do you believe the, the, the statistic you've used is accurate? Because you just said biological the, truth, the I want to make sure. The statistic that I cited is as accurate as the information that we have available right now. Okay. But that information, as I just mentioned, is not necessarily fully comprehensive. Sure, so you believe it could be higher. I want to make it sure. that are made by doctors. Okay, I would say the statistic is significantly lower from you. the literature that, uh, that I've read. Um, but again, let's remove intersex from the table because when we're talking about transgender, we're not generally talking okay. about intersex. So intersex Kleinfelders, but so, so, but there are genetic anomalies. Question, but that was my question. Yeah, well, let me answer it. Can I answer your question? Between, then why would their gender? So, so biologically, they're am born I, Am I, I going to be allowed to answer at any point? Well, here? but I, let me just clarify my question because okay. you said I'm talking about intersex and you're talking about transgender. But for me, this is related because if people are born in between, like in terms of physical manifestation, right? Sure. So then why should they have to choose I'm a male or a female if they were not born a male or a female? Like, right. yeah, that's my question Okay, for you. so I'm gonna go back to answering your question. Yeah. Um, all this was, was very imperative in answering your question because you said biological realities, people need to read a textbook, and then you mentioned how somebody expresses themselves, how they identify. There are two different issues. I'd like to address them separately if we can. But they're because not I separate. Agree, that because is my I, question. You, you well, let me answer. Going to answer I, I, my question. I am going. I am answering your question. If people are biologically so, if we take away, I'm just going to keep between. talking as though you're polite here. So, if we take intersex and we take, for example, Kleinfelder. We take, for example, intersex. We take Kleinfelders. We take genetic anomalies that are very outside of the norm. You're referencing Kleinfelders. So, for so example, um, there are some people. We've talked about this earlier. There are some people who are born without feet. There are some people who are born with webbed hands. There are some people who are born with 12 fingers and toes. Mm -hmm. But if what we teach in biology class is that human beings have two arms, two legs, two feet, 10 fingers and toes. We don't teach biology. We don't identify certain biology based beings. on certain uh, uh, based on, very, based on outsiders. Yeah, we don't. That's not how we teach biology. So that's not how, that's not how outsider, doctors. Then... That's not how doctors treat biology. So let me go to your. So I want to. I want to separate what we were talking about there: intersex and, and a very small percentage versus transgenderism. People okay. who choose to identify who aren't born that way. But keep, because you keep pressuring me on that, let's let's go to intersex. Let me ask you this: Were you among the statistical reality where you had some very uh, distinct primary? sex characteristics as intersex because the vast majority of people born intersex are not LGBTQAIP activists. They're people who are born with very clearly identifying traits. It's not just right in between. The vast majority have micro penis and large clitoris and sit internal testes the, the and it's pretty majority. easy to identify. So would, was that the case with you? Uh, yes, I was identified at birth as being intersex. 
Okay, but was but it, not everyone is, because as I mentioned, no, was it the case where you were identified as a female pretty quickly? You had primary sex-defining traits uh, in that of a female. Well, I was I was assigned a female because of the choice of of the doctor that worked on me, right? But like I was born in between, so for me, like a doctor made a choice that even though I was born in between, even though they knew because of a. Um, What's that called? Amniocentesis. Mm -hmm. So they knew before I was born that I had XY chromosomes, but because I was born with a vagina, they knew that I was intersex, but because there is a doctor, again, who plays God and makes a decision because it's all what's going to go on the birth certificate, I right. was assigned female at birth. Okay. So you didn't transition later on in life? No, no. No, okay. So my question again for you is just, I just, because the statistics would reflect that the overwhelming majority of people born intersex are not just born directly in between the two. There's a very clear delineation with identifying sexual characteristics with male no, that's, and female. that's so not true. There's, there's it chimerism, is there's, no. It is true. But, um, so moving on from the intersex, if we remove that, I think that you are, I think that what you're saying is, is, is correct. I would certainly separate you. telling someone who is born a certain way that you know more about the science of my existence than I do. That's the, 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 I'm not, that's the, the literature where, like, is there. And if I, we want to talk about our sides agreeing or being able to have productive conversations, I think that maybe that's a first step in, in y'all's camp, is like not assuming that you know better than everyone else who've lived a certain experience. I don't, just you know? like I don't interrupt. Well, I'm sorry, you're, you're interrupting my day by questioning my existence and my boss's existence, so I'm, I'm not going to apologize for interrupting. I, I didn't question your existence. I haven't questioned your existence. And I haven't interrupted you. And I haven't said that I know more than you. Only you have done that in this conversation. So right now we're at a crossroads. We want to continue with this conversation and it to be civil and I'm to disagree. I'm just being uh, televised or whatever, reported. Uh, as I am I. forward to watching it after. So if we remove intersex and very small percentage of outliers, let's say it's the 1.7. I don't agree, but we'll go with that. Now we're ad addressing the transgender issue, that gender okay. is a spectrum. So yes. um, why? How many genders are there? Why do we go with that? Because that's very separate from so genetic gender, anomalies of intersex. Right. Gender is a societal construct. So okay. as my boss mentioned, there is a spectrum. So some people identify purely female or purely male. Some people identify in between. You, you already talked about the different pronouns that are available. And it's based on your you're something intrinsic that you were born with in your head. So we've proven, for example, that in terms of sexual orientation, that being gay is not a disorder. It's just like a biological reality. It's a human condition, right? And um, and being transgender is the same thing. It's like you're born, there's actually studies that have come out now that transgender brains more closely align with the gender of the brain that they identify with than the brain of, of how they were okay. born. Can I, can I address that? Sure. I have a question there. So you said, so I want to make sure I'm not uh, misrepresenting your view. You said gender is a societal construct. Those were your words. It is, yeah. Okay. It is. So if gender is a societal construct, how can there be a male brain and a female brain as you just described? Because there, there are brains that fit like more, if we're thinking about a spectrum, right? Like there's brains that fall here on the spectrum, brains that fall here on the spectrum. Like each brain biologically is different. Like we know this because of genetic variants. And so some people identify more with traits that we categorize as female. And, and so those brains look more similar to those who that does, I'm sorry, but what you're, you're taking a, you said it's a societal construct and now you're making a biological argument. Is there biologically a male brain and a female brain that are different? There is biologically a brain that is closer to a binary example of how people identify, people who identify as male and, and, and present that way. Their brain looks more similar. And so even if they have been born with a body that, based on what we talk about in society, or, you know, phenotypically, like having certain like genitalia or, uh, you know, gonads that like, that we would say are female, their brain still looks more biologically similar, like when doing a brain scan, to okay. someone who identifies as male. Like there are certain I, I, I types of make, brain that exist on that spectrum. Can you, can you see how for me that's, that's uh, not a super clear answer? And I want to make sure that I don't get your presupposition incorrect. There are I'm, generally male brains. I do a lot of like, generally female. I know that like getting people to repeat the same answer. No, it's over not, none of this will be for like an outlier that you can then cut and splice into something. But none of this will be edited. I'm happy to answer another question if you like. None of this will be edited. Okay. None of it. Yeah. All of this from beginning to end. If this goes up, if this interview, we don't put up an interview that is edited. So I want to make sure that I understand your your your, your point of view here. There are what is they're generally considered a male brain biologically 
And there is generally what is considered a female brain biologically. Right, by how and, we but as a society gender, define male and female. But they're just like well, two, no, 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 two no, ends the, of the a The biological makeup of, of a brain brains. is not societal. The biological makeup of no, a brain is right, biological. No, you're right, but what I'm saying is so the brain, make, right. So what I'm saying, the brain that you call the male brain or the female brain with what you're you saying. You did, not me. I'm saying is closer to that brain that, that you are referring to as a male brain. You referred to it that way. So I want to make sure I'm correct that you believe there is a male brain generally and I'm a female brain generally. I'm not going to say yes to you when I'm explaining my answer, when I'm giving you my answer. Okay. My answer is what you are referring to as a male brain is more... But I didn't. You did. That's why it's important. You brought this up, male brain and female brain. I'm trying to understand what you brought up. I didn't bring up male brain, female that brain. That brain is the, what, what society is referring to as a male brain. Whether that person was born, regardless of their genitalia and their physical presentation to the world, their brains are more similar in certain ways. And that is because there's a spectrum of types of brains. And so there's a brain that's like that, and then there's a brain that's slightly to the right on the spectrum, and then one that's slightly to the right of that. And, and there's this whole spectrum of types of brains, just as there is a spectrum of types of skin color or facial hair, all these different things that we've talked about, right? Like, And so what we have found is there is actually a correlation between this identity and a brain that looks a certain way. So okay. people aren't making something up. It's like something that intrinsically that they are born feeling and identifying in this way. Right? Feeling and identifying in a way. Okay, yeah. And this is important because the biology and the identification are two very different things. So I'm going to continue along the premise which you originally expressed. There is, I, I certainly agree with the biology. There is a biologically defined male brain and female brain. They're different. They operate differently. There are different developments and different portions of the brain. They fire differently. They have different levels of neurotransmitters and they respond to stimuli differently. There is a male brain and a female brain, absolutely. And there are some anomalies. There are some very, uh, very, uh, a very acute there's a number of in outliers in between, but not much. Huge. There is the a male brain and a female brain. Okay, well, if the entire world exists on a spectrum, and then there are limitless genders and limitless brains. How do you determine what's right with the literature? How do you run a scientific study if you're saying there's a limitless number of if brain types and a limitless number of identification types? How do you line that up not, as a study? If myself does not threaten your daily existence, then why do you care? It does. It does. It doesn't no, threaten my existence. Not. I believe the restructuring of Western civilization based on... I don't believe gender is fundamentally interchangeable. I don't believe men and women so are interchangeable. So Western civilization is right, is what you're saying? Because there, That's a different conversation, but yes. Really? Yes. So the whole white supremacist and Western perception of society is what is right? I don't believe white supremacy is right at all. Well, Western civilization is arguably founded by the colonization by white people of people of color that existed already no, Western in, civilization in Native America is not found in white supremacy at all. So I believe Western civilization, the civilization that allows people to live freely, the civilization that freed slaves, the civilization that brought you that iPhone, technology, paved roads, plumbing. Uh, the Romans did that earlier on, but it was very primitive. Yeah, I believe Western civilization is right. And a fundamental role in Western civilization is that of male and female. And I believe that that is very important as it relates to what we teach children, very important as to how we rear children, very important as to how we jail people if we're going to define pronouns if we're going to define gender identification, I think it's important if we're going to change the entire fabric, the makeup, to identify what it is. So with that, how many genders are there? You'll have to excuse me that I'm having trouble engaging with someone who feels that Western civilization is the right way, which is founded in these certain principles that I just mentioned. It's not, And the though. only way. And that America first mentality is actually what's causing the degradation and like our falling of, of our, our status in the world is American exceptionalism. Really? Or your exceptionalism of your viewpoint. If you really where, want to say would, change where my would, mind, uh, your, where would your mind is not open to other ways of thinking. Well, it, here's one thing. If you're looking to change somebody's mind, coming in very aggressive and interrupting. I'm angry. I'm not. A, but that's not a good way know, to change somebody's mind. I, you ask me a question and then I try to answer it and then you stop me halfway through and ask me a different question or tell me that I'm not responding to your question. So forgive me if I'm frustrated. Yeah, well, I, I'm just trying to get clear Please. answers to understand your presupposition. And then you, you were the one who brought up, for example, male brain, female brain and said no brains exist in the spectrum. Let me let me bring this up. This is no. a very new thing, you know. That modern gender theory, it's, it's not a the gender thing. non-binary, I would, I would where does it stem you, from? It doesn't, I, that's not the question again, you're asking multiple No, I'm questions. asking you, because you said it's not a new thing. I'm saying it it's is a new thing. It's not a new thing. If you okay, so where does it come Greek from? Greek or Roman mythology, there's yeah. all different types of humans. If you look at Hinduism or certain religions outside of your white, I imagine you're Christian, correct? Yeah. Right. Outside of that societal and worldview, mm -hmm. there are a lot of different texts that are very, very old that talk about all different types of people. 
yeah. that talk about trans people, intersex people that used to be referred to as hermaphrodites, which is a phrase that, that we don't prefer anymore. We find it to be very triggering and offensive because of the Why? way that it's been used historically. Okay, but kind it was of like the medically N-word, used, right? Kind right? of like the N-word, right? Like, there's a certain Well, not kind of like context. the N-word. Wasn't hermaphrodite a medical term? No, now the medical term is intersex because the medical community understands that certain phrases then are used to marginalize other human beings and so people stop using Was it a medical term? And so people stop using them. Was it a medical term? Um, so medically, there also used to be something called phrenology, which was measuring like the heads of black people and saying that they were like um, scientifically okay. less than others. The, the so science evolves ask, all the time. The, the You're only, asking if it was a medical term. Yeah. There also were it wasn't, medical it terms medical like term. phrenology well, that you are now shown it. to be very racist and bigoted and outdated and sure. marginalized. The reason I bring it up. And things that kind and open-minded humans do not use. Sure. Well, that is my response to your question. Well, the I reason I bring it up is because question. you brought up uh, hermaphrodite and compared it to the N-word. Was the N-word ever a medical term? You know, I, I don't... And the I, reason this matters, again, is yesterday's medical term is today's hate speech. Society can't keep up. And that's why definitions matter. That's why gender matters. So that's so why biological studies matter. Up. Like, it's so hard for those people and not the people who are being marginalized. Yes. I believe well, it's important. I believe it's important for both you know people I, to I, be in a I society that functions. I appreciate having the conversation. I really do. Thank you very much. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. I'm sorry I don't have a box of tissues So let me give you. you. Let me give you uh, real quick. Please Simone de Beauvoir in 1949. That's where modern gender theory started. Then it goes to Judith Butler in the 80s and 90s. Hey there, YouTube viewer. You like Samantha B? Of course not, because you've actually made it to this end card. You are a miracle of the internet. I would say subscribe or hit the notification button, but I don't really know what that means on YouTube. You might not get notified anyway, but you can join up at ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. That's mug with this wonderful hand etched mug, and you get to watch not only clips, but the full one hour daily show every single day. That was redundant because I said daily, but every single day, but we're gonna keep it anyway because we shoot these end cards a whole lot in one afternoon. And we're scraping the bottom of the barrel with this one.